What's up, everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items, and yesterday we had uh, some pretty good matches. In Korea, we had DRX beating Fred at Breon. Fred at Breon managed to take one game, which isn't shocking. Uh, I think I said that the other day, that DRX is the kind of team that kind of plays down to their competition. Then we had Homolife and Sandbox. Homolife uh, didn't have Samd, um, which like negatively impacts them, obviously. It was already a close match to begin with, but not having your starting 80 carry doesn't help things. Um, then in the LPL, we had Billy Billy Gaming against Team World Elite. Billy Billy Gaming lost one of the games to Team World Elite. Not shocking. Um, Team World Elite has some good players. I really do think that Beishong is an extremely good jungler. I hope that he gets picked up by a different team or World Elite kind of turns it around. I know that they haven't had him for much of the season, so if their team is built around Beishong, it's tough for them to perform while he was out for, I think, the first six or seven matches. Then we had Weibo Gaming beat LNG. By the time that the match started, Weibo Gaming was the favorite. Um, I know some people, well, one, one person in particular has been commenting on the videos talking about Weibo Gaming. And I don't know if something was lost along the way, but I'm a huge Weibo, Weibo Gaming fan. Um, I think that last night LNG was the correct side to be on because ultimately I do think that they are the better team long term. Um, but when Sunning made their run at Worlds, I was one of the only people talking about them as a dark horse in the betting scene at least. Um, and it's because of the fundamentals of their team, which at that time uh, was very similar. They had the strong jungler in S of M. Um, not necessarily a carry jungler in the in the new sense of the word, but is an impactful jungler, more similar to like, uh, you know, Tarzan or Kanavi, but he's less likely to carry on those style of champions. Um, then we had Angel, who had a really good year that year, uh, was not always convincing, but ultimately a good player. And then Huan Feng and Sword Art um, were great. And Sword Art has been replaced by On at this point. I don't think that he'll really be coming back. I'd be surprised if they made that transition to him with how well they've been playing recently. And going into last year, we talked about how if On was an upgrade, theoretically an upgrade over Sword Art, it would have been a very interesting team to support. Um, and it, it appears that it's taken some time, but they are playing much better. There were points last night where On made very good plays. Um, but I still think that... I still think that LNG is probably the better team. I have a, I have a future on Weibo Gaming. So if Weibo Gaming wins the championship or V5 wins the championship, I'm going to win money on it. Um, but as as time goes on, I'm going to be trying to temper expectations for Weibo Gaming because while they have these very high highs with the Shy, uh, which is why we call them the Shining, um, but at the same time, they, they will probably disappoint us at some time in the future with like a huge loss. Um, and that's just, it, it happens to every team, but especially with a team that has the shy. Um, at least that's what I'm anticipating. Um, so actually, before I do that, let's get the, um, let's get the LCK out of the way. We're going to go through, uh, LPL, LCK, LEC, and the LCS, uh, in this video. Um, well, I guess we should just start in the LPL, not the LCK. So here are the rosters for tomorrow. So we have LGD against Thundertalk. We have JDG against Anyone's Legends and FPX against Rare Elite. So starting off in LGD against Thundertalk. I, I prefer LGD for sure. I think that Fearness is better than New. Um, I think that Shadow is probably better than Chieftain. I, I like Shadow a decent amount. Um, Chieftain coming over from Korea, I think had previously played on VG Gaming, um, but has moved from team to team, has always had competition in the jungle from their teammates, which in my opinion is a bad sign because I like players who don't need to have potential substitutes. 
Uh, then we have Jay against UCAL. I wouldn't be surprised if Jay is better than UCAL. I think that throughout UCAL's career, they've been somewhat overrated, especially when they were in the LCK. Um, going over to the LPL, like, I just, I'm not convinced that they're a very good player. There's a reason why they're on a team like Thunder Talk and not a team like RNG, for example. Like, if they were such a good player, one of the better teams would have tried to pick them up. Um, because a team like RNG, could you replace Cryon with a mid laner and have a better team? Probably. And then in the bot lane, uh, Eric and Jinjiao against Puff and Southwind. Puff and Southwind, I think most of the problems that, or most of the apprehension people have towards picking them for DraftKings um, or supporting Thunder Talk because of them, like, they were on Invictus Gaming when Invictus Gaming was going through an identity crisis. They didn't have um, a strong jungle presence. Obviously, the Shy and Rookie are still very good players. We see them on new teams at this point, and they're playing very well. Whereas Puff and Southwind have gone to lesser teams and haven't been able to turn them around. And that's that has a lot to do with the talent of those players. Um, I think in this matchup specifically, they are close to LGD. This could be a very bloody match. Um, but I also think that Chieftain and UCAL can kind of drag down the bloodiness in a defeat. So I'm a little afraid to play LGD. I think that LGD's playstyle lends itself to kills. But again, you need a loser that's willing to... Uh, give up a lot of kills, and I'm not 100% sure that that's Thunder Talk with these players. Um, next up, you have JDG and Anyone's Legends. I think that this is definitely a match that we can expect a lot of bloodiness. I think that since JDG is the favorite, you'll want to have them more than you'll have Anyone's Legends. But if you play a lot of JDG tomorrow on DraftKings specifically, you probably want to have hedge stacks with Anyone's Legend um, because JDG, when they die, when they lose, they die a lot. And that is great for DraftKings, but I will not be um, picking anyone's legends to win. Uh, and then we have FPX and Rare Adam. And this one kind of scares me a little bit because I think that FPX has had very good matches throughout the split, but also very bad matches throughout the split. And a lot of the good feelings we have towards FPX are because of their uh, the, their tournament success in the preseason, and also from, like, previous roster iterations. Um, Shallow Who is not a pushover. I like Shallow Who more than Cube. Beishuan and Leon are pretty similar. We could be moving into a, a meta where Leon is actually very good. Um, you know, like, that's why Invictus Gaming picked him up. Uh, it didn't work out, but it's because of the type of meta that the game kind of presented wasn't favorable for Leon, which kind of destroyed, not, not destroyed the team, but hurt the team a lot. Gory against Drive, I don't have much of an opinion between these two players. I think that Gory definitely has shown higher highs between the LCK and the LPL, so you probably have to give them a slight edge. And then LWX and Hong against iBoy and Yu Yanja. I think that I, I'd be I'm actually not sure what the public perception of these two players um are at this point. I know that people have a high opinion of LWX because he was on a world championship team, even though he wasn't the primary carry. And then I know people have a high opinion of iBoy because they just do. Um, I'd be interested to see which one is thought of more highly in China specifically. Um, both of the supports are serviceable. I don't really have a, a big take or a big lead in one way or the other. Uh, so like I said, I definitely like LGD. Definitely want JDG. And then I prefer the FPX side. I, I wouldn't play FPX at minus 222. I think that Rare Adam at plus 170 is better. Um... I'm not going to play Rare Adam at plus 170, but I would consider them at plus one and a half maps. They should be able to take one game off of FPX. Um, I think you could probably also do anyone's legend against JDG because JDG's style is so aggressive and volatile that even if they're the aggressors in all three games, they could give up um, a lot of kills in the early game and anyone's legend just snowball out of control. Um, I will not make that bet, but I could see why you would want to. Uh, and then LGD and Thunder Talk. There's a reason why the line is close. It's because people are uncertain about LGD um, and this roster. Um, I'm willing to take. I'm willing to kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, I've seen better performances out of LGD than Thunder Talk so far. Um, and then the following day, we have three more matches: Ultra Prime against World Elite. Ultra Prime is a minus one ninety dog. Is pretty surprising. I think you can take World Elite outright. 
Um, definitely plus one and a half maps. I think that Beishang is much better than um, Hacker. I think Hacker is their jungler. Let's just take a look. Why guess when I can just look it up? I mean, I know I'm right, but Hacker. Uh, then we have Beishang and Hacker. So Beishang and Hacker, I prefer Beishang. Biu Biu and ZS, that's debatable. I probably prefer Biu Biu's experience, but ZS is the kind of player who was highly thought of at one point uh, in the developmental league. Shanks against Kryon. I, I definitely prefer Kryon, um, but I don't like his play style. So I could see going towards Shanks um, in this matchup. And then we have uh, Stay and Kadaya. I think Stay played yesterday, so I think he'll play again. And then we have Elk and Xiaosi. Elk and Xiaosi are definitely the better side in the bot lane. If you're making a bet on World Elite, you're making a bet on Beishang. And, you know, I don't hate that. Um, could be a very bloody match. I think for DraftKings specifically, you want to play both sides. A fun, a fun day of games, actually. In the second match, we have Weibo Gaming against OMG. This is a spot where you have to play OMG plus one and a half maps. Um, you would assume that it's going to be a pretty bloody match as well. Uh, let's get the lineups. Don't need that. So Shanji against the Shy. The Shy is obviously much better. S of M against Aki, S of M is better. Angel against Cream, I think they're pretty much the same. I think that stylistically, they don't really have... Their their best champions don't overlap. I think that if Cream plays Akali, there are a lot of matchups where he will have the benefit um, over Angel. And then the bot lane, Huan Feng and An, definitely better than Abel and Cold. So the question is, can Cream carry a game? The answer is yes. Can Abel and Cold draft their way into a good matchup in bot lane and win? Yes. Can the Shy overextend and die to Shanji in lane and then get camped by Aki and then OMG wins a game? The answer is yes. So I think definitely take a look at the plus one and a half map line. Um, but I, I kind of want to do that. Uh, then we have Weibo, so I'm going to pick Weibo. And then Top Esports against EDG. This is another game where you just kind of have to pick against... EDG, they're definitely overrated right now. I've been saying that since before the season started. Um, I don't think less of them because they lose matches. It's just the, the the lines aren't correct because they're the current world champions. So if you do Flandre against Wayward, Flandre definitely has more name recognition, has had better performances on stage, but Wayward is a good enough top laner to draft into a good matchup. The, the kinds of top laners we don't want to see are... Like players like New, where it seems like every single game they're in, they're on like the wrong side of a matchup, and you're not really afraid of them to carry the game hard. Uh, Tian or Xiaopeng against Jai Jai. I don't really care which one it is. I think they're both close enough to Jai Jai in order to justify playing them on DraftKings and to kind of think about the upset. Knight and Scout. Scout has definitely looked better for the past year or so. Well, not really. So Knight, Knight looked better in spring of last year, and scout was more consistent but the the highest highs came from knight uh and then viper and mako in the bot lane against jackie love and uh jackie love and mark most likely um i definitely prefer edg side in in the bot lane um viper is one of the best 80 carries in the world and he's the reason why they won the world championship i know that like i know that some people don't some people may not agree with that but it seemed pretty clear to me, at least. Um, so what's more important? Having name recognition or having very high highs? I think that Jackie, Love, and Knight give you access to like very high outcomes where they can outperform the enemy team. Scout Viper Mako is more like consistent, let the enemy team make a mistake and just overwhelm them. Uh, it's definitely the better playstyle long-term um, actually, I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's a play style that works. We know it works. They won a world championship. But Top Esports, I think, can drag them into a mechanical game 
that Viper can still play in and still be very good in, um, but gives Top Esports more chances to win uh, than they would otherwise have. So I think that I want Top Esports at plus 177. They haven't looked good this year, but the talent is there. So that would be my pick. Then we have Thunder Talk against FPX. FPX is minus 1,000 favorite. That seems like a ridiculous line. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't pick them. I wouldn't pick Thunder Talk to win outright, but that means that their plus one and a half map number is probably just incorrect. So definitely look at that. Billy Billy Gaming against JDG. Definitely play JDG. I don't even have to think about that one. Uh, let's go lane by lane. That's crazy. Uh, so 369 against Breathe. I do prefer Breathe, but 369 is a good enough top laner. Uh, Weiwei against Kanavi. Kanavi is better than Weiwei. Yagao against Fofo. I think Fofo is overrated. I don't hate Fofo. I think that they have had some good matches. There was, I think there was a point during their match against um, either EDG or LNG where like, he made a really insane play that I was like, okay, maybe I'm wrong. But... I still think he's overrated overall, and Yigao is probably underappreciated at this point. Um, and then we have Hope and Missing against Doggo and Crisp. I mean, we've seen BLG lose games to, like, what I would consider not good teams. And JDG is a good team. I have a future on JDG to win. Um, I might... Do I have BLG as well? Let's see. I have BLG... And JDG. JDG, 3,300. That'd be nice. Well, it's, it's not to win 3,300. It's plus 3,300. Which would still be nice. For sure. Um, where was I? So, yeah. I think that that's a pretty easy one to be on the dog. And then last but not least, we have LNG against V5. I'm not surprised that LNG is listed as the favorite, but by the time by the time this match happens, I think V5 will be the favorite um, because the money the money line will probably move in their direction. People have seen good things from V5 recently, so I think if you want to bet on V5, you should bet on, you should bet on the, bet on them now. If you want to bet on LNG, you should wait. But. Yeah, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to pick LNG. So let's move on to the LCK. So tonight we have Gen G against Nongshim. I think this has the potential to be a very bloody matchup. Nongshim, is, Nongshim hasn't had their full roster together for a lot of the split, which is a huge problem. But whether or not they have looked good, they probably think of themselves as a, as a very good, very talented team. So that, in my mind, means that they will be trying to be aggressive like they were against T1. I think that Genji is definitely the better side. The reason I wanted to highlight that is because for DraftKings specifically, I think that we have access to Genji's upside on a night like this, where a lot of the times we don't. Kwangdong Freaks against Damwon. I'm definitely on Damwon. Damwon's been underperforming so far this year, but they're just an overall more talented team than Kwangdong. If you wanted to bet on them outright, plus 212 isn't the worst number in the world, but I can't do that. I just won't I won't be doing that. Uh, KT Rolster against Fred at Brion. Fred and Brion seems to keep all their matches pretty close. They took a game off of DRX. They can definitely take a game off of KT. The line is pretty similar between um, this match and the match from the other day. Um, but I think that DRX is a better team than KT Rolster. Maybe not by a ton. Um, but this line seems kind of off a little bit. I would expect it to be a little closer. Um, so I would pick KT. I don't love Fred and Brion as an underdog, but winning winning one game i'd be surprised if they didn't win one game to be honest and then t1 against homo life t1's been on a roll you're not picking against t1 at this point uh gen g against drx i would love if drx got this upset so i'll take the emotional free roll i'll pick gen g and then nongshim against sandbox definitely have to go nongshim i think that nongshim is the better team overall uh so i have all those in my sheet already and then we've already done I don't know why I don't know why the LEC matches aren't on here. Um, but we have them here. Um, so I highlighted I highlighted these because I was trying to figure out what I think the playoff picture is going to look like. Um, so let's just go game by game. So Mad Lions against Astralis. Mad Lions against Astralis. Mad 
needs to win this game. I don't think that necessarily means they're more likely to win this game than they would be otherwise. Like, if they were playing well... Um, I wonder if this line has moved. Yeah, they don't have any of the lines. I don't understand what that's about. Uh, so, Mad, I'm definitely going to be on the Mad side here. Uh, XL against SK Gaming. I'll be on the XL side there. Fnatic against Misfits. I think that the Misfits are probably overrated at this point. Um, the projected line was plus 200. They're at minus 124. They're, it was at plus 200. They're at plus 124, so that's a huge difference. I think that you can definitely justify playing Fnatic at minus 156. Um, I'll probably take a look at that tomorrow. Rogue against BDS. Rogue is definitely better than BDS, but... Rogue is definitely better than BDS, but like everybody can kind of lose at this point, but I'm on Rogue. Vitality against G2. Again, I have to be on Vitality at this point. I think that the line is a very good line if you're a Vitality supporter, so I'd probably bet on Vitality there. BDS against Astralis. So I have it as basically a 50-50 the line is the the vig is on bds because they expect more people to bet on bds um that doesn't necessarily mean you should bet on astralis but that's a question mark for me so let's do the lane by lane astralis BDS. White Knight and Adam. You still have to prefer Adam. Zenzara and Synchroff. I definitely prefer Synchroff. Um, they've been... BDS has been able to get these early game leads, but they throw them a lot, which is obviously concerning. But if you told me that one... If you told me to guess which team has the early game lead, I would guess BDS. In general, the team that can get the early game lead is able to convert it, so I'll, I'll be on that side. Nuclear against Dajor. Um, we've seen some bad stuff out of Dajor, but we've also seen some bad plays out of Nuclear Int as well. There's like a dragon play that like stands out to me, um, which I don't, I don't like. I don't like betting on teams that do that kind of stuff. So like either way, I would probably never bet on this game in real life because both teams just make like head clutching mistakes. Um, but if I had to pick a side, I'd be on BDS. So that one's BDS. Mad against XL. I think that the line is closer than it should be. So I'll be on Mad Lions. And this is where talent evaluation comes in. Because if you think that one team is more talented but has been underperforming, you would expect them to regress towards their talent. Um, so I'd be on Mad, Li Mad Lions. Vitality against SK Gaming. This line is overinflated as well. I think you can feel pretty good betting on Vitality. And again, they need to win these games. Vitality and Mad Lions need to win these games to make sure that they have a spot in playoffs. And they need to hope that like XL loses some games. So Mad Lions beating XL is probably a good thing for Vitality every time that it happens. Um, then we have Misfits against G2. This is another spot where you have two teams that are very close. You're basically just picking which side you think is more likely to win. You're not really looking for value. I don't think that either team is really mispriced, so it's probably a stay away for me. If I had to pick a team, I'd pick G2. And then Rogue against Fnatic. The line has Rogue favored a little too much, but not enough for me to feel like it's a good bet. Hmm. Odawamne against Wonder. I don't really have a huge lean. I think if we're taking long-term long -term history into consideration, you have to probably lean Wonder. I think he's been better at his peaks than Odawamne. Uh, Malrong against Razork, definitely Malrong. Um, Larson against Humanoid, definitely Larson. Uh, I think Humanoid's very overrated. I don't like his play style. Uh, no, 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 no. Upset in Hillisong against Comp and Trimby. That's a good matchup. It's a fair matchup. But I'll take Rogue. Okay, so I said 
BDS Mad Vitality G2 Rogue. And then we have the LCS. So in the LCS, let's do this. So I'll start putting in the lines. Dig against C9. So we have C9 as a minus 192 favorite. It's a 6% differential. Um, that makes me think that C9 is still a little overrated, which is surprising. I would expect more people to be have like negative feeling towards C9 based on the LS stuff. Um, I don't think there's really a bet to be made here, which is probably what the book is trying to do. They're probably trying to dis disincentivize you from picking C9, but I don't want to pick Dig. Um, who, I want C9. Team Liquid against Golden Guardians. Team Liquid minus 400, which is exactly what we had as the projected line. And then Golden Guardians are 276. Um, 100 Thieves minus 455 against TSM at plus 303. That's a bad line. I want TSM there. Uh, you're getting 100 points. Well, not 100 points. You're getting $100 extra for making that bet in my, in my mind. Uh, Immortals against CLG. This is basically the line that I have as well. Minus 154 to 117. This should all be. Evil Geniuses against FlyQuest. Minus 196 to 147. Uh, I'm not picking against Evil Geniuses. Um, I guess the CLG match against Immortals. I probably prefer CLG. I just don't like Immortals overall. Uh, Team Liquid against Dig, minus 323. Now we have 229. I'm not picking against Team Liquid. I think that Dig could win a best of one, but I'm, I'm not going to feel good about that bet. TSM against CLG, minus 143 to 108. Definitely like TSM here. I think that's a good spot to bet before their match against... Um, 100 Thieves. If they beat 100 Thieves, then they're, that line's going to move a decent amount. 100 Thieves against Cloud9. This is about right. Oh, Cloud9 is listed as the favorite. It's, it's a 50-50 either way. Let's just leave it like that. Um, with that being said, for, um, Summit again, someday I prefer Summit. Blabber against Closer, I probably prefer Blabber. Fudge against Abadage, I somewhat prefer Abadage, but that's in a traditional sense. Like, as a mid laner, I prefer Abadage in, in the games where, like, C9 understands they're playing against Abadage, drafts Fudge an easy champion. Like, I don't really see there being a huge problem. And then uh, Berserker and Winsome against FBI and Huhi. I think I just prefer C9. I really do like their upside. Berserker has had some really good games. Um, and even in some of their losses, and even, even in a Jin game, I was kind of impressed with how he played, uh, which takes a lot from me. Like, just the way that he kind of moves, you can kind of see it's a little, it's a little different. Um, and that might sound like a cop-out um, answer, but I think you should just watch the Jin game that he played, and I think that you'd probably agree with me. Uh, FlyQuest against Immortals, minus 175 to 134. <sighs> I kind of want to take Immortals there. That one doesn't feel good, though. I expect FlyQuest to come down to Earth a little bit. Not saying that they're bad, it's just I don't think they're as good as they've played so far. Minus 227 for Evil Geniuses, which is right around what we had. So that's not a bet. But you pick the EG side. Cloud9 
against FlyQuest. And why am I missing? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're missing three games. Uh, Cloud9 against FlyQuest. Minus 208. Minus 208 to 156. Again, they're they're putting a lot of additional weight onto Cloud9 to make you not want to bet them, but they're not giving you value on the underdog. So I think that's another stay away. You just pick C9. E G. And this is where we don't have games. Golden Guardians against Immortals is minus 125 to 103. To, to minus 103, so I'm just going to put 100. And in that game, Golden Guardians against Immortals. I think Golden Guardians has looked proactive, which which is a good thing against Immortals. The, the potential problem is that Immortals isn't going to take... Um, they're not going to feel like they're the underdogs against Golden Guardians, like, ever. Um, so maybe that's a good immortal spot. Um, but that's basically it. So we've gone through all the games from this weekend, except for the, the games that don't have lines. I do think that Evil Geniuses will beat CLG. Um, TSM against Team Liquid. It's another spot where I kind of want to play TSM, to be honest. Um, and then 100 Thieves against Dig. Probably just correct to be on the 100 Thieves side. Fake God against Someday. I could see that being a good matchup. Um, River against Closer. I could see River being the right side in that matchup. Blue and Abadage. That one's more heavily favored to Abadage. Um, we haven't seen any of the huge performances out of Abadage, Ab Abadage but we know it's there. Um, and then FBI and Huhi against Biofrost and Neo. I think that the line is going to be good enough to justify betting on Dig. So I'm going to pick Dig. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.